If you clicked on this video, it's either because A, you have a Mark 1 that doesn't run, B, a Mark 1 without an engine, or C, a Mark 1 that just it doesn't hold up today's performance standards. So let's turn that sad little Mark 1 into something that looks a little more like this. So I've broken it down. I'll have everything, all the numbers and prices and stuff in a spreadsheet that'll be linked in the description if you want to go and see. Also, all the parts are linked there as well. So whichever build you decide on going with, the spreadsheet's there with all the parts you need. Everything that I found for all the swaps, I used Bose S&P. Uh, they make very good kits. They're very fairly priced as compared to their competitors. So just go with them. They're great, very well liked and supported in the Mark 1 community. So uh, just give them your business instead of the other two bigger companies. And then also Euro Tuning is where I got a majority of the other parts. I love to support Euro Tuning. They're very good. They have great customer service. If you have any questions, reach out to their salespeople. They're very quick and very knowledgeable about the platforms that they are supporting. So the engines I'm gonna be covering in this video are gonna be the ABA, the 18T, the TDI, the VR6, and now the 07K. So let's start with the VR6. The VR6 is a swap that I'm the most familiar with because I've done it. I mean, that's the one swap that I really chose to do for the Mark 1. A lot of people say it's too heavy for the platform. I tend to disagree because who cares when it sounds good? <laughs> so main benefits of the VR6 is obviously uh, it has the most cylinders and largest displacement of all of the options that I have here for you today. Uh, and you know what they say, there is no replacement for displacement. The parts I'm going to be listing here for you are for the AAA VR6, which is the 12 valve that came out of the Mark III. These are becoming a little harder to find nowadays. However, if you look, they are out there. Um, it just might be a little bit harder to find out of the other options that I have for you. First off, let's start with the actual swap itself. You're going to need to find an engine, whether you buy a full swap car or just buy the parts individually. I've budgeted for about $1,000. That can fluctuate based on where you live, the availability of parts. And also, like if you live, I'm in Pennsylvania, but if you live anywhere in the Northeast, probably going to run into, you're going to have a lot of, a lot more supply than around the other, the country. But odds are, is that the, prices of parts are going to be a lot more expensive because uh, most of the enthusiasts are up here. So I have it budgeted for $1,000. Uh, that's just a nice round number. Could be give or take, depending on how cheap you can get either a full swap car for, uh, if you want to part it out and make some of your money back, or if you just want to gather the individual pieces and parts. The AAA VR6, you're probably going to get the boater and then an O2A transmission. That's usually what came on the Mark III's but you could also do an O2J from a Mark IV. It has to be a VR6 transmission. Uh, the four cylinders won't bolt up with a six cylinder motor. Just, it all is pretty much the same. The uh, gearing for a Mark I, uh, a lot of people say that the O2A gearing is better, but really it's what you could find. So next up we have the swap kit. The swap kit coming from S&P comes in around uh, $2,016, and that includes the following options. So that's your base kit, so that's your mounts, has an O2J shift box adapter. So that's a little plate that goes in. You can bolt the Mark IV shift box in underneath the transmission tunnel, uh, sort of where the stock Mark I box would go. We have the accessory belt. So with this swap, you're gonna be deleting the AC and power steering. Uh, so this belt will allow you to delete all of that and still maintain, I guess, the stock routing of the belt. The only problem with this is that the belt is a five rib instead of a six rib. However, it's been tried and true. Many people have used it, not a huge deal. This also includes the price of a hydraulic clutch kit. Um, when I first bought my car, it came with a cable clutch and personally, I did not like it at all. Um, the amount of times I had to adjust it, driving it back from Michigan, 800 miles, I think it probably adjusted it four times because the clutch would just not engage after driving the car for a while. And the hydraulic kit just makes the, it makes the pedal feel so much newer and nicer and it makes the driving experience of the car way better. Next we have the low profile radiator coming direct from S&P. These are great because a lot of people will find, uh, you'll find a lot of swaps, people just use the stock radiator and they flip it upside down so that it has the coolant ports on the correct side. It doesn't have enough cooling power to cool the VR6 while it's sitting still. It's fine if the car is driving, but if you're getting in traffic, that thing's gonna overheat. Uh, these radiators are great. Uh, I've been running it on my car and I've had no trouble with overheating at all. This also includes all the radiator hoses needed uh, and then as well as the tack adapter. So the only issue with going from a 
a Mark III computer to like a, a Mark I is that the Mark III's use a digital TAC signal, whereas the Mark I's have an analog signal. So this TAC adapter just allows you to convert that signal so that the tachometer can know what it's reading and read accurately. This also allows you to adapt the four cylinder tachometer to the six cylinder reading from the engine computer. So next down we have the uh, secondary air injection delete. Uh, this is, I think, kind of illegal for emission stuff, but uh, at least in Pennsylvania, when cars are registered as an antique, which likely you're gonna be registering your car as an antique, uh, they are exempt from emission testing. So you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, that's $19. So next up we have the swap harness. Uh, you can either get this direct from S&P or you can also go to the TDC shop. Uh, they both do very similar work on their harnesses and they're both very good. And that's priced at $435. So next up we have the downpipe. So with this swap, you're actually still using the stock Mark III exhaust manifolds and the downpipe just bolts right up to the stock manifolds and it connects the Mark I style exhaust. Uh, so you don't need a custom exhaust for this application. You just need this downpipe. That is at $405. And then we have an exhaust. So you can get any sort of Mark I exhaust. I recommend getting at least a two and a half inch exhaust. Um, anything bigger than this, you're gonna have trouble fitting in this, routing it the stock way uh, because of how the rear beam sits in the rear. And also two and a half is, is enough for a, for a naturally aspirated VR6. And honestly, most of the other applications in this video. I like to get my exhaust from Tectonics Tuning. Uh, they make great products uh, for just a normal non-stainless steel exhaust which would just be a uh, aluminized steel. Uh, that's $417.75. That also comes with a test pipe. So, you know, you don't need a catalytic converter. <laughs> so all the parts I just listed for you come to a subtotal of $4,293.08. And you're gonna see it, there's a, a trend in this video where a lot of these swaps are gonna cost about five grand to do. So when you're going into this, definitely budget for at least that. That doesn't include your shell, obviously, but definitely budget for at least $5,000 going into doing one of these swaps and doing it the right way. Also, I have a couple of recommended parts that I would do while you have your engine out, just because you don't want to put your engine in and then have to do a major service after everything is bolted in. So what I recommend doing is a timing chain, the bolts re required for the timing chain kit, a head gasket, the head bolts, cl a new clutch flywheel, and then the hardware for that. And that brings the final total to $5,000 $94.12. So next we have the 18T and as well as the TDI. A lot of these parts are very similar and very similarly priced. So I'm just gonna kind of put them into the same category. Some of the fueling stuff might be a little different from the 18T to the TDI. I'm not personally very familiar with uh, diesels. I've only ever messed with gasoline vehicles. Going for the TDI, Expect the pricing to be around what I'm saying for the 1AT, but I'm just gonna talk about the 1AT now. 1ATs obviously came in a Mark IV platform. If you're gonna be buying a full car, avoid getting a Passat because the Passat won't have the necessary transmission that you need for the swap. That also goes for any Audi besides a TT. You can get a front wheel drive TT, but not a Quattro, unless you wanted to change your Mark I to have uh, all wheel drive in it. Uh, but that's going to be a lot more fabrication than what more most people are comfortable with. Um, so same as the VR6, I have this price at about $1,000 for your harness, your trans, your ECU, and your engine. Again, depending on your location, that can fluctuate a lot. 1000 bucks is just a very nice round number. Moving down to your intercooler radiator. So this is a big expense you don't have when doing a naturally aspirated application. This intercooler radiator comes in at $835, and this is from S&P as well. This is also the top fill uh, radiator, uh, which is nice because then this allows you to, to delete the ugly coolant ball. Um, I have it deleted on my VR6 as well. Uh, it's a little nice thing off to the side. So that's $835. Then moving on to the swap kit. This includes a manual timing tensioner uh, without a water pump. We're going to just getting a water pump from a different place uh, as it's usually cheaper. And then also includes a or speedo cable so that you can connect the transmission to your speedometer and have it work. Realistically, I would recommend going for a GPS Speedo of some sort. When I had the cable, the Speedo cable into my Speedo, it never read correctly. It was off by, I think legitimately like 20 miles per hour at all times, uh, just because of how the gearing ratio is different uh, with the cable. But I just recommend getting a GPS as it will be a, the more accurate option because you can adjust it to be more accurate. 
So that's $1,005.52 in total. Another thing that's different between the Mark III's and the Mark IV's is drive-by-wire. And with the Mark IV's, you'll have drive-by-wire, which is basically, instead of having a, a throttle cable that goes from your pedal to your throttle body, it's all electronically done. So this drive-by-wire adapter allows you to still use the Mark IV drive-by-wire system while maintaining a Mark I pedal. So it's very easy to build up, to bolt up and have this functionality. Another thing too is with the Mark I's, sometimes running the, th the throttle cable can be kind of a pain to get it to one, be the right length, and two, to be able to go from, uh, I guess, no throttle to wide open throttle. Uh, and sometimes on my car, the throttle cable actually gets stuck just because of, of the way it's angled. Um, so that kind of eliminates that issue. Uh, intercooler piping, again, another issue would, you wouldn't have if you did a naturally aspirated application. That's $200. You have your rad hoses, $79. Your secondary air and jet, uh, delete, $18. Engine bushings and trans bushings, because they're not included into in the kit, those are both $32.25 each. Uh, again, we have the hydraulic clutch, that's $385. The swap harness is $495. The downpipe is $355. Uh, obviously, this is a very similar to the uh, BR6 where you need something that allows you to go from the Mark IV Turbo uh, to connect to the Mark I exhaust location. That's $355. You have your exhaust. This is the same exhaust I have through all the other swap applications. That's $417.75. Another thing that's beneficial about this swap is that it allows you to use stock Mark I axles. If you swap this transmission flanges to 100 millimeter flanges rather than the 108, I believe it is, um, it allows you to utilize a 85 and up Mark I axle, so that would be out of a cabriolet, and those are about $30 to $40 each, depending on where you get them and when you get them. You might honestly be able to pull them from a junkyard too, if you want to just use the axle and then rebuild the CV joints. So that brings us to a subtotal of $4,993.04. So a little bit more expensive than the VR6, but obviously, with a 1.8T over a VR6, you get a little bit more tunability because of the turbo. Um, so your horsepower per dollar is going to be less with a with a 1.8T, but it really comes down to preference in that point. If you wanted to do a high horsepower build, I'd recommend buying a VR6 and then turboing it because you're going to be able to make more horsepower with a VR6 more easily than with a 1.8T when you get to like when you get to a certain point. With a 1.8T, you can get to about 300 pretty easily without having to do major upgrades. Uh, I guess we call that stage two, um, but with a VR6 adding a turbo and when adding this, a similar amount of boost to a VR6, you're going to make more power every single time. So then going down to what I have recommended, uh, this is a lot similar to what I have for the VR6. We have a clutch, which is $329, a head gasket kit, which is 82 bucks, head bolts, and then water pump. And that brings us to a total of $5,467.24. So now moving on to probably one of the more interesting swaps. I haven't seen very much of these and I think I might have a surprise for one of these coming up soon, but it's a, the 07K swap. So this is the five cylinder engine that came out of the Mark V and Mark VI platforms. It's gained a lot of popularity over the last couple of years. So the 07K today is kind of like what the ABA was maybe 10-ish, 10 or plus years ago. Back then, even before I was in the Volkswagens, the ABA was a great swap platform because you could get them anywhere. You could get them so cheap. Unfortunately, those days have come and gone, and now your ABAs are starting to get up into the price point where, one, they're kind of hard to find, and two, people are wanting more for them at that point. But nonetheless, I will cover that more when I go over that engine. So out of all the swaps I've covered here, the 07K is definitely going to be the most difficult. The platform itself is very big and compared to the other swaps, requires a little bit more fabrication and a little bit more mechanical sense. The way that s and has this swap set up is that you have to utilize a Mark IV four-cylinder trans, that's an O2J, and you have to shave down the case a little bit. They provide all the information on how to do this correctly, but it does require a little bit of fabrication. You also have to trim a little bit out of, the, out of your, your inner fender liner uh, in the Mark I. So if you don't want to trim up your car at all, then this is definitely not the engine for you. The other two, or actually the other three options will be a lot easier to just drop in. And if you were, for whatever reason, wanted to go back to an all original car untouched, then you could theoretically do that. So again, I have this price at $1,000 for the engine, trans ECU and harness core. These engines you can still find pretty regularly in junkyards. Um, and you can find them for pretty cheap on Facebook. 
you can pretty much at this point because you're not using a you're not using the trans out of the car just pick up some some beater rabbit or jetta with an auto and just pull the engine out of it then we have the swap kit so from s p the swap kit costs one thousand five hundred eighty four dollars and eighteen cents this includes your tack adapter your radiator your mounts speedo cable pretty much everything you need to have the car go into place then you have your swap harness so for whatever reason, this swap harness is a lot more expensive than the other two options. This harness comes in at uh, $795. That's going to be a kind of a trend with this swap is everything kind of just costs more. And I think that's because it's not as much of a, it's not more commonly done. And there's not a lot of support for this engine out there. So obviously you can charge more for the parts. The downpipe from S&P costs $1,495. This does seem kind of expensive, but it is a full stainless header. And in order to not use this, you would have to take a Beetle uh, 2.5 exhaust manifold and then modify it and make a mid pipe that connects to your stock exhaust. Again, that requires, it's doable, but requires a lot of fabrication. Uh, and if you're not skilled with that, then buying this header will eliminate a lot of that headache. Exhaust, again, same thing for Tectonics. Uh, that's $417.75. And then secondary air injection delete, that is $28. So that brings us to a subtotal of $5,710.93. So going down to the recommendations, again, uh, we have timing chain, head gasket, head bolts, clutch flywheel, clutch hardware, just all stuff that you maintenance you to do while the engine is out. You don't need to do it, but that brings the total to $1,620.54. So this makes it by far the most expensive swap to do by almost, well, more than $1,000. Again, it's a very new platform swap for this car. And also very cool because, again, like the 180s and VR6 have been done so many times, uh, just this is kind of different. So lastly, let's talk about the AVA. Uh, this honestly portrays to a lot of the older four-cylinder engines from Volkswagen, like the 16-valve or even the G60 if you really wanted to go there. So the AVA is probably going to be your best bet out of all of them, uh, just due to 16-valves uh, just getting very expensive now and making it kind of uh, pointless to get over some of the other newer engine swaps if you're not like a pure enthusiast or like want to do something period correct or then you have the g60 which is just a wild just a wild motor and honestly just there's a reason why people pull them out of their carados and put vr6s in them uh, but i guess i can't really speak on that because i've never owned one and never worked on one but from what i've read people don't really like them but moving on we have the aba the aba is great because you can utilize as much or as little as the stock mark one parts that you have if you want stock radiator works good um, with this application, you can still use the stock Mark 1 Trans if you really wanted to. Honestly, I would recommend just swapping to a Mark 3 020, or you could even do an 02J. As long as it is a four-cylinder transmission, it will work with that engine. You just obviously need to have the correct mounts. If you're going to use an 02J, you're going to need to get 02J transmission mounts from S&P. If not, you can just use the stock Mark 1 mounts for, a, for an 020 transmission. Uh, realistically, the biggest expense here is probably going to be your swap harness. Well, obviously you're going to need to get the engine and stuff too. This engine is going to be the cheapest option. Uh, you can expect anywhere from probably about 1500 to two grand to do this. There's a lot of documentation about this swap online. I'm not very familiar with it because it wasn't really necessarily on my uh, radar for engine swaps I wanted to do. It was, it's been done so many times, just didn't really interest me. But it's a great option if you want a simple bolt-in solution. Obviously you just need your swap harness, a couple of different pulleys. I think you use a VR6 pulley instead of the stock ABA ones because you're going to have to delete your power steering and your AC. But again, there's so many write-ups and so many documentation about this swap online that it's very easy to figure out. So then it comes down to you. Really, what are you looking for out of your swap? Are you looking for cheap, easy horsepower? Are you looking for engine that sounds really good? Are you looking for something that's different? Are you looking for something that's really simple to do? If I had to give my thoughts on it, I would say if you're looking for cheap horsepower, go with a 1.8T. If you're looking for a cool sound, cool motor, big build potential, go VR6. If you want something different and you want something that, if you want a platform that's going to be constantly evolving and uh, going to get popular probably in the next couple of years, you'll see a lot more of these, then go with your 07K. If you want something cheap, go with ABA. So if there's anything else I've missed here, just let me know down in the comments. I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. I've done a ton of research on uh, most of these platforms, just trying to figure out exactly what to do or what I wanted to do going into this. And then a little sneak peek, I might have a 07K coming to the channel soon. So stay tuned for that and I'll catch you guys later.